A Bino State Governor Samuel Otom raises alarm on insecurity, says 2023 general elections might not hold if the problem persists. And the House of Representatives moves to investigate $1.5 billion for Hackett Refinery Rehabilitation Trust. Plus, politics starts now. I am Justin Akadonia. Now, 72 hours after narrowly escaping death in the hands of alleged armed herders, the Benin State Governor Samuel Atum has sounded the alarm bell on insecurity, saying the 2023 general elections may not hold if the problem is not solved. While well, speaking to State House correspondent after meeting with President Mohammed Buhari at the presidential villa Abuja, Atum also warned the political class to preoccupy themselves with how to solve the Western security situation that was threatening the unity of the country and forget about the 2020 election. Meanwhile, Governor of River State, Nisam Wiki, has advised the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Ibrahim Atahiru, to withdraw soldiers from politicians. Discussing with me, a two political analysts, Francis Chilaka and Biodon Shomi. We'll start with uh, Biodon Shomi. Uh, good evening to you, Mr. Shomi. Many thanks for joining us on Plus Politics. Let us look at the issues um, critically right now. The Benue State Governor was attacked um, over the weekend and uh, just uh, barely 32 hours, uh, or 72 hours rather, he addressed a uh, State House correspondent yesterday and he said specifically that Nigeria is actually sitting on a keg of gunpowder without meaningful progress being made on the issue of security. Let's look at that statement critically vis-a-vis uh, -vis 2023. Uh, some people might say uh, it's two years uh, still very far, but how do you really analyze that? Show me, let's start with you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. When you look at carefully examining what Governor Otton said, you will realize that he is more or less pontificating about the future against the security situation in the country, which is deteriorating by the day. And there can never be any better hallmark, you know, pointer to the deteriorating situation um, than the attack on Governor Autumn himself. Because when you look at the complement of security men accompanying the government, you begin to wonder why would anybody, any sane person, think of attacking a heavily protected uh, uh, government? And that tells you what about the ordinary people? And that tells you the state of the security situation in the country the fact that nobody feels safe, and now governors are not feeling safe. So with this level of deterioration, there is no way how we can expect elections that may be fair, but not peaceful. And because of that, that will erode the basis of uh, democratic legitimacy of such an electoral process. I think this is what Popham is saying, one. Two, if the situation deteriorates further than what it is now, we may even find ourselves in a situation where you cannot even have any democratic elections at all, because anarchy may end up setting in, which nobody prays for. Um, everybody's hoping we'll be able to work it out when we have other resolve our differences. But with the speed of banditry and kidnapping on the highway, you know, mindless attacks on people and government officials on the increase. Um, some people are bound to start asking questions whether in reality, if you're able to stem this problem, whether we'll be able to have elections at all. All right, thank you, uh, Biodo Shomi. Let's slide over now to Francis Chilaka. I want to hear your thoughts uh, regarding what the governor of Benue State, Samuel Atom, said as regards the 2023 election being threatened. Um, well, I think, I think the governor has, um, he has actually aired the fear and um, the views of most Nigerians right now. Um, this is the first time in the history of Nigeria where a few years down the line before the elections, there's so much worry, uh, so much anxiety, and so much uh, you know frustration. And you know it gets my imagination. I actually say, um, why is it that this government is finding it difficult to 
use a sledgehammer, so to say, on the so-called bandits. Uh, you know, we keep changing their names from bandits to uh, headsmen to Boko Haram. You know, I think that um, if the government can actually muster the political will to declare them as a terrorist group, it will take care of a lot of issues and things will fall in line. And the fear of everybody about um, 2023 election is if we continue the way we are going right now, it's going to be difficult for anybody who is not armed, so to say, to contest the elections. All right, uh, gentlemen, uh, we'll come back to you uh, just uh, in a bit. But let's just um, take a um, highlight from the address of um, the governor of Benue State yesterday uh, to State House correspondent. And we'll come talk some more. Stay with us. I see a, as mockery, uh, trying to mock me, but I pray that what happened to me should not happen to any other person. Because the truth of the matter is that we know what is going on around our country. We know that there are AK-47 everywhere, from north, east, south, and west. And so people are there. But it is amazing, even when Funam came out and even took responsibility that they were responsible for the attempted murder on me, and some people are still trying to doubt that. I, I, I find it difficult to explain, but I, I leave that to God. When Mayati Ella went to Yola and said that I am their problem, and underneath they, they, they had planned to do whatever they, 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 they want against me, because it was just last week they had a press conference, I came out to say that I am their problem, and that the law prohibiting open grazing in Benue State should be uh, repealed. How can I repeat? It is beyond me. It is not Otom, it is about Benue State and the Benue people. I didn't just sit down. And write and um, uh, wrote and signed the law. It went through due process. Everybody was invited when we presented the executive bill to the House of Assembly to also ensure uh, that there is fair play. There was public hearing. Those people who think that they owe this country should be apprehended and prosecuted. Otherwise, we begin to think that uh, they are sacred cows. Meetiela, Funam. And all those ones, they are responsible creating problems all over the place by what they say. And that is what I'm advising that, look, we are sitting on a cake of gunpowder in this country. Instead of creating, adding uh, petrol to an existing fire, it is not good enough. It is not a good thing to begin to plan against people who are legitimately doing the right thing. What offense have I committed? by ensuring that we maintain the rule of law. Democracy is anchored on the rule of law. So when people come out and are insisting that they will not respect the rule of law, and you want me to uh, keep quiet, I will not. But I won't take laws into my hands. All right, uh, that's uh, the governor of Benue State, dear Samuel Odhom. You know, breaking it down and explaining how um, the Mieti Allah uh, supposedly attacked him and, of course, um, Funam taking responsibility. Uh, which begs the question now, gentlemen, some believe that um, the government uh, is tolerating some certain people you know, who are perpetrating this crime. Uh, does that make it hard or harder for the government to you know, stem the spate of um, insecurity, judging in mind uh, the issue of um, ethnic coloration? Just uh, yesterday, the governor said that Funam, you know, he actually asserted that Funam came out to say that they were responsible, uh, responsible for the attack over the weekend. And right now, we have not, you know, heard about maybe the kingpin or the main man behind Funam being arrested. What are we doing as a country? Is it that uh, some people are being shielded in some quarters in government? Gentlemen, Biodu, you can start. Um, well, I, if you want me to take a first shot at it, I, I would say that, yes, to a large extent, it's, it's, it's the body language of the government right now. Um, because if you're, if you're following what is going on politically, you will understand that um, uh, it is one thing to come after a group or a set of people because of their ethnic uh, meaning and the other people. A few months back, you know, um, I remember when um, some group of persons came together in the north 
and gave him a quick notice to the southerners, especially the southeasterners. And nobody was arrested. But then, you know, before we know it, you know, anybody who talks from the southeast gets picked up. You know, so I think that yes, the government is giving the impression that there are sacred cows that cannot be touched. Because I think that what the government should actually be doing is that anybody who comes out to speak against the peace and communal living of Nigerians should actually be picked up and locked up. All right, uh, Biodo, let's hear your reactions. Do you agree with uh, Chilaka's uh, postulation that there are indeed some sacred cows and being protected by the government? Well, the way I see it is um, this. One, crime does not have any ethnic coloration. It is the reaction to the crime that has ethnic coloration. And that is what is causing the major problem we're seeing in the country. It is the reaction to the crime, you know, which people are interpreting, or in or reaction or inaction to the crime which people are interpreting as ethnic um, coloration. Um, that is a fact. What cannot be denied is that the Nigerian police security services, including the Nigerian police force, uh, keep looking at the president's body language. Whereas law enforcement should not be about anybody's body language, it's about you know, implementing the law as it is. And that is what uh, the, the Nigerian police force are not doing currently. When people are arrested of a particular ethnic store and then sent um, uh, to the police, you know, for investigation, the police ended up releasing those people, you know, in many cases, uh, rather than investigating or arraigning them in court. In some reported cases, you know, allegedly, uh, that even those arrested for killing people, you know, were... <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Three before they have that kind of very appalling, and it's the unprofessionalism of the Nigerian police um, services. What they should be looking at is not the Nigerian uh, president's um, body language. They should be looking at the laws, the letters of the law, and then implementing. Their failure or inaction to it, it is is what is exactly leading you know to this uh, feeling of um, ethnic coloration, which is correct. Um, to a large extent, when you look at even the reactions of All right, gentlemen, uh, we would uh, come yeah. back to both of you right now. But let's uh, take this uh, bit of a soundbite. Uh, just yesterday, the chief of army staff uh, visited Port Harcourt. He's been doing an, uh, a tour around uh, the Federation, and uh, he met with the governor, uh, Nason Wiki. And one of the things that came out of that discussion is uh, the postings of uh, you know, security uh, personnel to VIPs are uh, where the men on ground are not really manning, you know, the people who sh actually need this and protection. We'll take that clip now and we'll come back and get more reactions. Stay with us. There's a need for you to make a difference. To bring back the respect Nigerians used to have in the armed forces. In those days, when you see a soldier, you run. These days are difficult. Why? Because soldiers have been exposed to politics. I want you to make a difference. To say that what your interest is to protect Nigerians, is to fight bandits, is to fight insurgency, and not to carry ballot uh, boxes. It was a big shame in 2019, what happened in this state. I'm sure you must have watched where the division turned to be high neck office. See ballot papers everywhere. Election in Nigeria is no longer, is no longer determined by your performance. It's determined by you being connected to security agencies and uh, high neck. If it was based on performance, you will see most politicians will change. All these people who are saying, talking about their independence, you can go wherever you want, not from here. Not from here. And we are not part of a secession of anywhere. We are not part of any insurgents, no. So I, I believe that you will say that, or you will show 
a different that you are not here for politicians. You are here to protect the integrity and the territorial uh, integrity of Nigeria. From the little you have done as you came, we are beginning to have confidence. But please don't change. All right, that was uh, the governor of uh, River State's Nason Wiki talking about uh, the partisanship when it comes to uh, the security architecture in Nigeria and, of course, and politics. Uh, he made reference to 2019 election. And he said, gentlemen, that uh, elections in Nigeria are no, no longer determined uh, by performance, but based on uh, who has uh, the higher connection vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, security and, of course, INEC, just where do we begin to strike a balance? Uh, where do we, you know, draw a line of who polices uh, our elections? Uh, but most of the times we find that, that the army uh, or the, will I say, uh, other security apparatus are actually joined uh, with the police to, you know, man uh, elections uh, where they should be tackling insurgency, you know, in the northeast, in the northwest, and uh, across various states uh, in Nigeria. Chilaka, I want you to begin with that. Um, you know, each time um, I hear government officials talk about um, uh, security personnel being uh, given to VIPs in Nigeria, and uh, there's need to stop it, and you know all of that, I, I just laugh because there's too much talking going on and little action to show for it. I remember a few was a few months back, the uh, Inspector General of Police said um, he was going to withdraw uh, policemen from uh, uh, VIPs and all of that. But we know nobody, nothing has been done about it. So it, it, it's, it's, it's one thing to say something. It's another thing to implement. So there are too many laws in Nigeria, but the implementation and enforcement of these laws is the bane of our problem. You know, so um, whether we like it or not, like I keep saying, whether we like it or not, I remember that the Eighth Assembly had um, a bill, which is still sitting on the table of Mr. President, the electoral, uh, uh, law, the electoral bill. It has not been passed into law. And I keep asking, why has it not been passed into law? I mean, we need to change our electoral system, um, overhaul it to a point where if the office becomes uninteresting, there will not be any need for anybody to be connected to any policeman or any soldier to, or any security apparatus to win an election. Election should be won based on one's credibility. But unfortunately, it is not working out in this country. And, you know, the, the governor rightly said it, if you're not connected up there, we need to remove that from our, our political life, our national life. People must be elected. People must get into positions based on their ability to perform and not based on how much arms, how much of the security personnel, how much of INEC officials they have backing them. All right, uh, Biodo, show me. Uh, let's talk about the pros and cons uh, of uh, the call for reducing security attaches to these uh, VIPs. Let's try and balance it because this has been an ongoing uh, conversation, discussion for so many uh, years, you know, with various um, IGs uh, saying uh, they will uh, withdraw attachments to VIPs and politicians. But then again, uh, some would say that uh, if we did that, uh, the Bender State government, or governor rather, would have just been an easy prey. But then again, how do we strike a balance, you know, to ensure that our VIPs and of course, and the ordinary Nigerian is adequately secured even before elections? Yes, um, may I start from this angle to say that first and foremost, Nigeria is under police. We have less than 400,000 police officers and we have about 150 officers, you know, doing VIP jobs, carrying bags for politicians' uh, wives, or doing paperwork in the offices. So for a country of 200 million people, we are highly under police. So that's much said. But the fact of the matter is this. When you live in a just society, there will not be two sets of rules when it comes to the issue of security. There will be no provision for private security guards, you no. Know, funded by taxpayers, using security officers, funded by taxpayers, you know, to provide security for the rich and the privileged, while we leave the rest of the populace. You know, on the other hand, 
um, with um, inadequate police. Uh, this is a major moral problem. It's just unfortunate that the Nigerian ruling class is not really thinking about the effect of what they are doing. Um, if you genuinely love the people and you claim you are serving the people, you are elected to serve the people, on no account would you create a situation where you would only have the same police officers to guide you alone. In some cases, four police officers to one person, in some two police officers to one person, while you leave the rest about, uh, 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 about 150,000 people to one police officer. You know, that cannot be right. That is fundamentally flawed. It's something that we need to stop. The idea, several ideas have been saying they need to stop it at one point or the other. They've not been able to do it because it's also seen as, you know, job um, quangles for the boards. You know, parliamentarians, they are there, they're going to have to look at uh, members of us of red senators, they will have to scrutinize the police budget. They know straight away they'll be in trouble, you know, if they should withdraw all the security personnel attached to individual, you know, uh, legislator. This is the major problem. But the fact of the matter is, Nigeria as a country needs to say no. We need to be able to ensure the security of everybody and not the security of a few people at the expense of the majority. All right, uh, let's go back to Francis um, Chilaka right now. Uh, most of the times, uh, security concerns in Nigeria, uh, they usually spike uh, during elections and uh, they slow down in the following years. But well, this is 2021 and uh, the elections are not due till 2023. But right now, we have seen uh, a hike, a spike, uh, a spate in insecurity in Nigeria. Would you say it is as a result of uh, uh, maybe the, well, I say the inactions of uh, the security apparatus uh, in Nigeria over time? Uh, well, you know, you, you, you know, you and I need to accept one truth, and that truth is that um, the security apparatus is underfunded, which is one. And once a system is not funded properly, it is exposed to all uh, manner of uh, corrupt practices. So what we have right now is people cashing in on the lapses and in, in, in actions of the government. I would say that, yes, um, the, the problems you're having is something that is gearing up to 2023 and it's going to get worse. Because right now, if you, if you look across, you find out that the pocket of violence you have is not just restricted to one area. Uh, a few days back, a, a police station was burnt in, in Imo State. Arms were cut out the way. Same in Anambra, same here. So it's, it's all, you know, something that is gearing up to the 2023 elections. But then there's a solution. You know, there's a solution to all of this. And that solution is simple. We need to have a law, just like the National Assembly sits and promulgates laws and all of that. We need to have a law where there must be controlled budget for, for elections, where we must look at the credentials. You know, what is the necessary qualification to be a local government chairman, to be a councillor? What we have presently is not right for the 21st century. We need to have a system that allows people you know, the educational qualification must be there and it must be vetted. We also need to empower INEC to a point where INEC should be able to reject a candidate and not pushing it back to the political party, you know, and then after they start going to court. But INEC should be able to verify who is contesting an election. What is this person's pedigree? And, you know, where does this person stand in the society? So you cannot say that INEC should conduct the election while the political parties decide you know, who um, stands in. And then if you look at, 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 the, at the voters, um, when it comes to voting, they don't put the pictures of the candidates. What you have are just political parties. So in other words, it means that anybody can actually be replaced at any point in time to contest the election. So, so the government so needs Francis, to, if I got you correctly, you know, are you to think as if there is no boss by ensuring that, as a matter of fact, they must ensure that the electoral law sitting on the on the table of Mr. President is looked into and you know passed. All right, thank you, Francis. I wanted to get uh, 
uh, your specific um, thought concerning uh, the role of INEC and uh, stemming this uh, political crisis uh, in our elect uh, electoral process. But then again, let me go back to uh, Biodo show me how much of these um, violence and uh, security challenges would you say uh, politicized despite calls that uh, these issues should not be politicized. Uh, uh, not too long ago, the same governor of um, River State, Anisom Wiki, came out to say that uh, uh, he called uh, out to the, uh, the federal government when he had some peculiar security challenges, but then uh, he did not really get the much needed uh, you know, solutions. So what are your thoughts concerning the politicization of security matters in Nigeria? Can you repeat that? I didn't get the trust of the question. Okay, the, what, my main question really is, uh, what's your reaction concerning the politicization of um, security issues in Nigeria? I uh, cited that uh, the governor of uh, River State, uh, who came out uh, not long ago to say that uh, these issues have been politicized, even when he reached out to the federal government, he did not get uh, the needed uh, solutions. Uh, Niger State governor also came out not long ago and said that the federal government is not really doing much to help uh, the issues. Politicization of the security situation, correct? Yes, yes. Hello? It's about the politicization of the security situation. Yes. Yeah, sure. um, we are bound to have... Look, when you look at the situation, the problems, um, like my colleague said, is not, you don't need a rocket science to solve many of these problems. A lot of them can be done simply by looking at, you know, the security situation, looking at the security architecture, looking at what we have designed for the country. Uh, let me give you a good example. I can borrow from what one of the governors are saying, uh, that... We, we need a multi-level policing in the country. If you have a multi-level policing, if one arm of the police force is unable to do the job, the other hand will be able to do it. There's nothing wrong in having a federal police uh, force, while at the same time, the states are allowed to have the police force, you know, made up of their indigents, because they know the local population, and then they will be able to uh, pick out the criminals and deal with the bandits. Well, currently, uh, we have laws, you know, already passed, which are with the president yet to be signed off. And at the same time, we have a parliament unable to override the veto of the president. You know, it's quite um, very disturbing. So it's actually the structure itself that is creating this problem that we have. A structure where you think you are in a federal system of government and you end up in a unitary system. There is no way in the federal system of government you can have the kind of security architecture which we have currently. We are, but it is strictly unitary, it is centralized. You know, we need to look at that system again and bring it down. Otherwise, we continue to have so this issue of ethnic policing coming into the debates on security issues from time to time. That would break it all down into have a multi level policing. There's nothing wrong with that police force. But, but we should be able to ensure the security of the people in any state at any given point in time. That is what is lacking. All right. All right, thank you so much, um, gentlemen. We are out of time on this particular segment. Uh, my guests have been Biodo Shomi and, of course, Francis Chilaka, both um, political analysts that we have um, x-rayed uh, the security challenges uh, with the build-up to the 2023 general elections. Thank you once again, gentlemen. All right, we'll take a short break now, and when we return, the House of Representatives has mandated its Committee on Petroleum Resources downstream to organize a hearing to ascertain the true state of the Port Hackett refinery. Stay with us, we'll be right back.